Hello, this is Torsten Lorenz, and today I will show you how to debug your Node.js applications with Xcode. Basically looking at the C and C++ layer, but seeing your JavaScript traces as well. So we're going to be using two tools for this, one being Xcode, and the other one being a plugin I wrote for LLDB called JBT. And this works with Xcode as well, since Xcode uses LLDB as a debugger under the hood. And just a quick idea of what you will get by using JBT with Xcode. Here we have a screenshot which was taken on the terminal but it will look very similar in the LLDB console in Xcode which shows uh, stack traces. These being C++ functions and these being JavaScript functions. And as you can see JBT filled in those JavaScript functions for us. Without JBT we would only see these addresses. Now in order to run Node.js with Xcode, we need to build it locally. And I added a wiki to the JBT repository which has build instructions. Basically, we are checking out Node and making sure we're using the 0.12 branch. And then we configure it with some options, the most important one being the Xcode option. We can just copy these lines into our terminal. We don't need the last line because we are building Node with Xcode and therefore don't need to make it manually. As you can see, we just cloned the Node.js repository and once that's done, which will take a little longer in your case because this video is sped up, we will configure it. If we then look at our folder, we will find a Node Xcode project right here. And we can then open this one. Xcode will then start indexing the files of your project and you can wait for that to be finished or you can just continue right along with the next step. Now we can select node as our target and then start the build by pressing on product, build or just command B. Building node for the first time may take up to a few minutes depending on your machine but for the screencast, we sped this up so you don't have to sit through this. Now we're almost ready to run our Node.js up from Xcode. We just got to configure one more thing. Press Command Shift Comma in order to bring up the Scheme Configuration dialog. Select Run on the left and the Arguments tab. We're going to define two arguments. One being the perf basic prof flag, which needs to be the first argument. This is very important because otherwise JBT is not able to add JavaScript to your stack trace. The second argument is the file we are actually going to run with Node. Now we just need to add a breakpoint to our application because we want our process to break somewhere so we can log the stack trace. We're going to do that inside the fs.c file and we're going to put a breakpoint in the uvfsread function. There's one more thing we have to do elsewhere though in order to make sure that Xcode initializes JBT whenever it starts debugging our application. So we're going to take care of that right now. First thing we need to do is install the JBT plugin and we can do so with npm. Now we can run JBT and it will tell us where it got installed to and what script to run in order to initialize it with LDB. So we just copy that line. It will look slightly different in your environment. Now we just basically add that to a file called LLDB init minus Xcode. So it should look like this now. This file will only be used from LLDB when we are running it with Xcode and that's exactly what we want. And now we are ready to go back to Xcode and run our application. Before we run our process, let's configure our breakpoint a little more closely. We're actually looking for synchronous file reads occurring while our server is handling requests. This is a case when this callback is null. So we can add a condition to our breakpoint saying the callback is null. All the other times the breakpoint will not hit. Additionally, we want to avoid hitting our breakpoint while the server is starting up. 
So we will disable it for now and run our process. When our server starts listening on the port, we will re-enable our breakpoint and go to the terminal to curl to our server. You can see that now we hit our breakpoint. And you can see on the left here that we got a stack trace. And the frames 6 through 17 have no symbols, which is why Xcode kind of bunched them together because they are pretty much meaningless. The same is the case when we just do a simple backtrace. You can see here that we got a bunch of frames that have addresses but no symbols. However, since we initialized JBT, we can use it now. If we run JBT instead of BT, which is just another way to run get a backtrace, we can see that the JavaScript symbols are now filled in. Now we can look at what's actually causing the synchronous file read to happen. So here we got this happening, and this is a file that's causing it on line 15. So let's copy this and then command O to open this file. Command Shift G is a shortcut to be able to paste the path in, and now we can open this file. And now let's find the readme function, which is indicated right here. Here it is. And we found our synchronous file read. And this is pretty much all that I wanted to show. There is a little more information here. If you're wondering how this works, you can list your breakpoints. And you will see that a breakpoint was added here that we did not add. And that's basically the breakpoint that was added by GBT in order to hook into code creation events. So every time that V8 creates code from JavaScript and tries to log that to a file, it will call this function here called log recorded buffer. And JBT basically listens on that breakpoint and every time it hits, it will record that information and use it later when you try to show your stack trace. As we can see, we hit this breakpoint almost 2,500 times, which means that that many code creation events occurred and that many symbols were collected by JBT. Obviously, that will slow down the startup of the process a little bit, and as long as code creation events occur. But in my opinion, that's definitely worth it, considering that therefore you get JavaScript in your stack traces. I hope you enjoyed the screencast and thanks for watching.